Hello guys and welcome back. We've got a really easy tutorial here for you. All we'll be doing is exploring the Semantic UI website. It's important that we get familiar with the website structure as a lot of the next tutorials are going to be kind of copy and paste from that website into our web pages. So what are we going to do here? Well, we're simply going to head on over to semanticui.com. We're going to explore the website layout, get to know where to find the things that we need. We'll then examine just a couple of elements really quickly so that you can get the idea of what the source code might look like and how to grab it and put it in our pages. And then we'll examine some finished page examples by inspecting the source code there. So let's head on over to the browser. I've got this uh, one open. This is just Chrome. I'm opening a new tab and I'm just going to search for semantic UI. So let's just do a quick Google search or something. We'll head to this first link, semanticui.com. Okay, so this is the home page. As you can see, it tells you a little bit about semantic UI, gives you some code examples. What we're going to do is actually jump right into get started. And don't worry about the installation, we'll actually cover that in the next section. I just want to get us used to the website itself. So if you see on the left hand side, there may actually just be like a little um, menu open button. So if that's the case, go ahead and click that until you see this menu bar on the left hand side. So this gives us access to all of the different components of Semantic UI. We've got some introduction, we've got some basic examples under usage, some global stuff under globals. We've got various elements that we can use here. So you can see button, icon, image, etc. We've got some collections. These will be used to um, group together different elements. We've got various views. These provide some pre-formatted templates for containing, um, well, kind of putting a few different views together into one. So we've got stuff like feeds, a uh, card, which we'll be exploring later on. We've got some other modules. These are just going to be more interactive elements like above. OK, and finally, we've got some behaviors such as form validation, visibility, etc. OK, so um, we can basically just pick and choose what we want to look at in this web page. You don't have to look at it all. We'll be exploring different components as we go. But I would recommend that after this tutorial, you take a few minutes to get to familiarize yourselves with the website. Otherwise, let's just take a quick look at some of these elements. Maybe we'll go with a button. That's a pretty classic one. We'll need lots of buttons in the tutorials to come. OK, so most of the web pages are kind of laid out in this format. We'll have the element name or the feed name, etc. And then just a bit of a description. So this is just a general button. It's a possible user action. We've all seen buttons before. Uh, no doubt you've used buttons to get here in the first place. And so here we have the kind of basic description. In this case, it's just a basic button here. We've got an example of what act will actually look like. And if we open up these brackets here, we get the source code that generates that. So it has the example and then the actual source code. So no doubt at some point we have all added buttons to some kind of an HTML page. You can use a button tag just like before. You can provide a custom class and then use some CSS to style it. But no doubt, unless you've used a framework like Bootstrap or Semantic UI, it doesn't look like this right off the bat. Typically, to be honest, it's kind of ugly right off the bat. And we have to do a bit of CSS styling to format it. Well, this is the benefit of using stuff like Semantic UI, is that we can actually just use the pre-built-in um, classes. The, a lot of the Semantic UI classes do begin with UI, and then something, in this case UI button, is the class name and it automatically applies all the styling attached to this class into this button. So this button might not look like much, but there's actually quite a lot already done for us. For example, we get a nice gray background. We have these rounded edges, a better font than before. We get this nice on hover behavior, okay? And we can click it, it says follow or following. That's actually a bit of JavaScript behavior. All right, so if we want to copy and paste the code, we can simply select it here, or we can just do copy code. It will copy it to the clipboard. And again, this is this whole theme of this course is going to be this kind of copying and pasting items that we want into our web pages and then a bit further customizing them. Let's say you wanted to customize this button further. You could actually customize the entire UI button class, or you could maybe attach an ID to it and customize things that way. So that's a very basic button. There's lots of different variations on buttons that you can see as you scroll up or down. We're not going to cover them in great detail here as we'll be kind of going into the greater details later on. It's just that any of the source codes are, I think, hidden by default. So you just need to open and close them by doing that. And then you can kind of see all the different behaviors. 
Moving to a different item, maybe let's check out a card or something. This is a pre-built view. A card will look something like this, and this is the default card, okay? And a card it just displays some site content in a manner similar to, let's say, like a playing card. So we've got the picture, we've got maybe the name or something, a bit of information about them. Maybe there'll be like a button or something that has some extra behaviors. If we want to examine this source code again, we simply open it up. Okay, and as you can see, there's this collection with a bunch of different stuff within it. So this is a UI card. Um, like I said, we'll be taking a look at these in greater detail later. But as you can see, it's got a div that's an image. It's got some content. It's got some extra content here. And this is just going to be the stuff down at the bottom. Okay, so as you can see from the source code, we're still building up our um, pages, websites, web apps, whatever, with the HTML source code. But instead of having to type this all out by hand and having to think about exactly what um, components go where, how it's all going to come together and how it's going to look, we can simply take a look at this, say, okay, this is what I want. We're going to copy and paste this code in here using the semantic UI classes, such as card or content, etc., to um, add that pre-formatting in, okay, and then we're basically just good to go. Now, the last thing I want to take a really quick look at before we move to the final examples is going to be way down at the bottom into uh, behaviors. So let's take a quick look at form validation because we're definitely going to use forms later on. So it's a good idea to get somewhat familiar right now. But I'm sure most of you, if not at least some of you, have used forms at some point. Well, all of us will have used forms, but some of you will have created them yourselves. It's basically just a way to enter some input and validate that input. So we use forms for things like logins, for example. Maybe if you're creating an account, we'll use a form. If you're creating an order, like you're maybe ordering something off of Amazon, they'll be using probably some kind of a form. And so there needs to be some behavior attached to the form, as well as some kind of validation. Well, Semantic UI has actually provided more than just the front end. It's provided a bit of actual behavior here. So by using Semantic UI's form uh, JavaScript here, we can actually provide some real validation. For example, let's say within our form, we have, let's see if there's the actual example here. And yes, so the actual example looks a bit like this. We have a first and a last name, or first name and a username, a gender, password, and a skill set. We have this agree and a submit. So there's going to be a few rules. Likely we'll need none of these to be empty. Perhaps our password has to be a certain length or something, and we need a certain number of skills. Well, we can use Semantic UI's form validation to do so. So we have a type of rule, which is make sure it's not empty. We need at least two skills. Again, gender can't be empty, username can't be empty, password has to be at least six characters. And we need to make sure that this is checked. Okay, so this is just to quickly demonstrate that Semantic UI goes beyond just providing style themes. It actually provides a bit of behavior as well. However, we will be taking a look at this in greater detail later. Just wanted to quickly introduce it to you. The last thing we'll do here is take a look at usage. We're going to take a look at some of these layouts. Okay, And I'm actually going to leave this uh, rest of the part up to you guys. So there's some pages. Um, for example, a home page, fixed menu. There's actually a pre-built login form. There's some items up here. And these are all just ways to demonstrate some of the semantic UI widgets as well as some of the layouts. So for example, let's say we want to take a really quick look at this login form. We can open it up. And if we want to see the semantic UI that code that generates this, we can do two things. We can do the view page source that actually opens up the entire source code on the next page in another tab. I simply right clicked, by the way, view page source. Or we can do inspect, in which case we can actually examine the source code right in the same tab here. OK, so I'll leave the rest of that up to you. Again, these are actually let's get rid of that. These are all found under our usage tab. If you go to layouts, then there's a few examples. I encourage you to look at a couple of those examples, view some of the source code to get an idea, um, explore the web page a bit more. And once you're done, head on over to the next tutorial in which we'll be actually setting our files up to use Semantic UI. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in that next one.